but please, if you have to, you know, do it. But, um, <laughs> but the next session, I'm going to turn it over to Marcus Beck. He's from the Southern California uh, Coastal Water Research Project, or SQUIRP, which has been a partner of Biosystem Development for many years. So he's going to lead the rest, make up a little bit of time, and then I'll come back at 4 o'clock. So uh, good afternoon. Um, my name is Marcus Beck. I'm really excited to start off this session on data visualization because this is my chance to fully indoctrinate everyone on the importance of these things for science translation. Um, so we have a, a really good um, group of speakers kind of in you know, rapid fire succession, pretty short talks, 15 minutes apiece. Um, and in between the talks, I'll sort of come up and introduce everyone and explain why um, I wanted to have them speak to you guys in the, you know, the relevance of the particular content to you. Um, but before we do that, I'm going to just talk a little bit about what I consider to be data visualization, um, particularly how it relates to um, actionable bioassessment data. So turning data into information that we've heard a lot so far uh, throughout this conference. And to start off, I want to pose a, a controversial question to rustle everyone's jimmies. Uh, do we think we're fully utilizing bioassessment data? Um, you know, we have, I see heads uh, shaking, which is, uh, I guess the answer I was expecting. Uh, you know, we have lots of tools, lots of good technical tools that do a lot of great things. Um, but in my opinion, and I think a lot of uh, other opinions in the room, is they're not fully utilized uh, to their, their complete potential. Um, we can use these things in more sort of proactive roles to uh, do things like watershed or regional planning or developing conservation priorities or actually using them to inform how we use limited resources. Um, and so with this idea behind actionable bioassessment data, I'm charging everyone with this, this concept that we need to use data to explore and synthesize, or rather use bioassessment data to explore and synthesize in an appropriate context to facilitate communication so that data and information uh, step. And again, thinking more proactively rather than the conventional reactive way of using bioassessment tools is, you know, just what's the condition, but then what next? Or rather, you know, what first, then next? Um, so this is, I think, a problem, uh, how we operate typically um, in terms of how these products are produced, um, just in the sciences in general. So me as a scientist, you know, we're, we're trained to deliver our products as papers and reports. We know those are not necessarily the most effective ways to reach the people that need those tools. Um, and so thinking about this, you know, conventional paradigm, this is the problem that I think we're trying to go against, where you know, there's managers and stakeholders that need the tools. Um, you know, say they're charging the researchers to develop some new index. Uh, this conventional linear process of defining the research goals, developing the tool, and then putting it into this report and saying, here's a report, now you figure out how to implement it. That's not going to work. Um, and so, truth be told, I think we could really value or benefit from having an open science paradigm to using uh, and developing bioassessment tools. And data visualization is a really important part of this, this paradigm. And actually, um, Casey O'Hara, who's speaking uh, last, is going to talk more about how these, these principles apply more generally to, to science. But I just want to introduce them to sort of get you guys thinking about how we can, you know, at least at the scientist level, engage more with the managers and the stakeholders to, to uh, um, get these tools more, more used. Uh, and so with this open science paradigm, you know, you're, you're still creating something, but you're doing things like putting your data on an open data repository, you're creating summary reports that are reproducible and integrated, um, you're making your tools uh, in some sort of accessible fashion, like a, an R package, for example. Um, you're wrapping all that up into an interactive application that actually puts the 
tool uh, into the hands of the people that need it, and you're finally, you know, giving that to the people that actually prompted the development of that information in the first place. So rather than this linear flow where the reports, the terminal end, we have this sort of circular iterative process that's open, transparent, reproducible, and you know, I think overall more effective at getting things done. So with all of these open tools, I think we can do more in, in, in more effective bioassessment translation where data visualization is a really important um, part of this entire process. So I'm gonna briefly just talk about three um, things that, that myself and others have been working on at SCORE that I think are, are hopefully good examples of what I mean by um, actionable bioassessment data. So how do we translate bioassessment tools through visualization? So we have um, this ASCII summary website that is, is totally brand new, uh, as, as well as the index itself. So, this is sort of giving you guys an opportunity to explore and become familiar with that, that new index. Um, then we have the SMC Stream Quality Index Dashboard. Uh, this is also really new stuff um, that gets at the idea of how do we synthesize multiple lines of evidence from not just the biology, but the, the stressor side of, of uh, the equation. Uh, so how do we take all that information and to actually you know, where the rubber meets the road to actually uh, complete some management action. And then the last one is this uh, stream classification priority explorer, uh, what we're calling SCAPE. Uh, and, and this is, I think many of you have heard about this before. Um, Rafi talked about this last year at CAPW. But, um, what this effectively does is gives managers a context for how do you do uh, bioassessment in, in developed landscapes. So those, those challenging places where you have sort of constraints on what the potential upper um, uh, ceiling of biointegrity could be. So I'm going to just quickly run through each one of these examples uh, to give you a better feel for what they're trying to do. Uh, and so this first one is the ASCII summary website. And really, I think what this is doing uh, is, well, one, it's a new index, so we want you guys to kind of just get more comfortable with what it can do. Uh, and really, this is sort of synonymous to that 500-page report, but it's an interactive report. So we've made this website where, you know, rather than having this huge tome of, of information, you can actually click on the, the tabs and, you know, look at what the scores of the index are, where things are scoring well or scoring not scoring uh, well, uh, what's the relationship of the index with um, different environmental variables, uh, as well as other existing indices. And so, in addition to sort of giving you the ability to explore more easily, um, we also kind of developed this with the idea that um, we're not gonna give you the answer to how to use this index or how it should be used, but we are providing you the tools to uh, allow you to answer your own questions through this, this interactive functionality. So this is, um, in my opinion, kind of a low-level way of getting at visualization. It's more just like, what's the information? Um, these next things are actually more about integration and context. And so, oh, real quick. Um, yeah, this is just an example about um, the, the ASCII website again. So just showing you, you know, this is the drop-down menu where, you know, one part of the site, you can actually just look at um, what the relationship of the index is with certain environmental variables. And so, if you were to put something like this into a report, it would be like, you know, easy 100 pages of tables and dependencies, but here we're saying, you decide what to look at, and you, you know, figure out what, what the information means based on what's important to you. Um, so this, this uh, second uh, visualization tool is uh, our stream quality index that was developed um, with the Stormwater Monitoring Coalition, and, um, in addition to SWAMP, the, the SMC data set is a great uh, wealth of information about the environment uh, in, in the southern part of the state. And so they have tons and tons of data, and the challenge that they want uh, to address is basically how do we synthesize this information to inform actions on the landscape. And so first and foremost, that's what this does. It takes bio, uh, biological indicators, uh, chemistry data, and physical habitat data, and combines that all into simple, actionable categories to actually say, you know, what, what's the condition and what's affecting that condition. 
And just to give you an idea of what that looks like, so if you go to the website, um, you know, this is the landing page, and first of all, you see a map that, that shows basically, you know, what's going on in the landscape. But if you're to click on any one site, you get this idea of, well, is it healthy or not based on the biology? Um, and if it's not healthy, what's potentially affecting that, that condition? What are the stressors? So is it water quality, um, physical habitat, one of either of those or none? So something else that you haven't monitored. And so this is just sort of condensing that information into um, all of those lines of evidence into these simple actionable categories that people can use as kind of a, a causal assessment light in a way. Um, we also retain the ability to actually drill down and look at the individual components of that index because there's again a lot of different pieces of information that go into those broader categories. And so this is again for showing for one site um, what the two biological index scores are for the CSCI and the ASCII, um, the three water chemistry uh, measurements, and then the, the six habitat uh, PHAB metrics that are going into that. And so this is just another way to kind of drill down and, and get a better idea for what's actually going on. Now this last one um, is I think the most integrated tool that we've, we've developed so far in terms of how you can actually use bioassessment data to inform action uh, real action. Uh, and this is our, our SCAPE tool where, uh, again, you know, Terry talked about this earlier with the, uh, you know, the modified channels and, and certain landscapes where it's just going to be really challenging to think about, you know, um, meeting certain targets given what's going on uh, in, in a particular watershed. And so this model basically, or rather this tool, um, leverages a model that basically tells you what is the biological potential at a site given the landscape, uh, and then looking at what the, the observed score is relative to that potential to basically identify management actions based on the expectation of where that site is likely to be given the landscape context. And so to give you um, another idea of what this means, and again, this is uh, sort of a repeat of what Terry showed earlier, this is kind of a, a common scenario where you know, a manager has CSCI scores for about, you know, hundreds of, of stream segments, and the challenge is you know, where do you focus your efforts for improving site condition or protecting certain locations or you know, doing more monitoring? And so you know, without any context, you might say, okay, well, these sites right here that are right below my target, these are the ones where I want to you know, put some effort forth to actually try to improve that site condition. Well, once you get that context on there, so in other words, the predictions from this landscape model that describe a range of scores, expected scores as a function of the landscape, you can kind of see where the observed scores are relative to the expectation. And so without knowing this information, you might say that you know, these sites right here, right below the threshold, I want to try to improve those. But with this context, you can say, oh, we know this is kind of a constrained site. If we put all sorts of effort into this site, we might not ever get it above that, that potential target. And so this context lets you say, well, maybe I want to think about alternative actions for managing that site. On the other hand, this one right here, which is pretty close to these other sites and the observed scores, the model's telling us that it very likely should be up here with its, you know, where, it, where the, the biological potential should be. And so if you were to put a lot of resources into getting that site um, improved, you're probably likely to get up to these much higher values, so you get more bang for your buck that way. So this tool enables you to prioritize and develop actions based on how a site scores relative to the expectation. And this is, uh, in our minds, kind of a novel way to apply bioassessment data that fully accounts for basically everything that, that goes into uh, the challenges of making a management decision. So that's my spiel. Um, coming up next, we have these four speakers, uh, and they're going to talk about sort of different flavors of how to do this. Uh, and, and again, I'll, I'll introduce everybody uh, before they go on. Um, 
But I also want to mention that uh, if you're sufficiently motivated to, to learn about how to do these things on your own, um, this is my shameless plug for our workshop that we're uh, doing tomorrow. Uh, myself and the, um, the newly minted Dr. Peak are going to be teaching our workshop. It's also going to be a fundraiser for the um, Cal SFS uh, student chapter. Um, so I encourage you all to come if you want to learn more about how to actually use open source, open science tools to make your own visualizations. Um, so with that, um, I think I am out of time. If there's a, I, I think I have time for like one question and I'm moderating so I can decide you know, if there's time or not. So yeah, thank you.